Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about fountain pens versus technical pens and let you know why I prefer to draw with fountain pens. On the left side here we have all things related to fountain pens and on the right side these are all the technical pens. So let's talk about fountain pens first. Now fountain pens are basically pens with metal nibs. The nibs they come in different sizes so you can get thin lines to thick lines and the ink they use can be waterproof as well as not waterproof. Most fountain pen inks are not waterproof unless otherwise specified. So to refill the fountain pen, there is either the disposable cartridge or in this case, I have a refillable ink converter here. Now with the ink converter, it's more economical to refill and use fountain pens. I can say for sure that there are definitely more designs for fountain pens compared to technical pens. We can have different types of body, different types of nib, and even for the nibs we can have different types of lines. So here are some fountain pens that I have. This is a Fable Castell. By the way, I have reviewed all these fountain pens. If you want to check out the detailed reviews, the links are in the video description below. I have with me Sailor, so there are different manufacturers. This is a Pelican, this is Pilot, and this is a China brand called Duke. So let me just compare this nib with this. Fountain pens with standard nibs like this, like the fine, extra fine, medium or broad, they are capable of producing consistent lines just like technical pens. However, there are actually specialty nibs for fountain pens such as this. This particular nib is called the Fude nib. It's bent at the top, so you can use the tip to create very thin lines or you can use the broad side to create very thick lines. So you can get different line variations in a single pen like this. The lines that you can get with specialty nibs depend on how you hold the pen. Now I do not have any ink in this pen. Let me switch over to a different pen to show you what I'm talking about. This is a Sailor Fountain pen. This is a specialty nib called the Cross Emperor nib, available on the Sailor fountain pen. There is this little tab right above the nib that can hold extra ink, so you can actually use this pen as a dip pen. Now notice the tip, it's designed a little bit differently compared to standard nibs like this. Right now I'm going to just show you the type of lines that this particular nib can create. I can use the broad side of the nib to create thick lines like this. If I hold it a bit differently, if I hold it a bit higher, I can get thinner lines. Like this. Or I can transition from thick to thin just by changing how I hold the pen. Or I can turn the fountain pen upside down like this and use the other side to create even thinner lines. So with one single nib, I can create three types of lines. So this is the thin, this I would say is the fine, and this is the broad. When you have different line variations in your drawing, it can make your drawing look a bit more interesting. Because consistent line widths, well, they are a bit consistent with lines like this, they can be a bit more fun. In addition to specialty nibs, there are also flexible nibs that can give you line variation. This fountain pen that I have is the Pelican M200. This is not known for its flexibility, but for the fine nib, it actually can give thicker lines if you press down a bit harder. So these are the normal lines that I can get. And if I press down a bit harder, I can get slightly thicker lines. And the same thing, if I turn the nib upside down, I can get even thinner lines. But for truly flexible nibs, you can get the line variations very easily. This nib that I have, this is actually still considered quite stiff. So I'm not able to get that variation as easily compared to really soft and flexible nibs. So this is the Pelican M200. The ink converter is actually built into the pen itself, so it's quite convenient to refill the ink for this particular pen. 
One of the advantages of using fountain pens is you have a wide selection of inks you can choose from. So you can choose different types of colors. You can choose between waterproof and non-waterproof ink. By default, generally speaking, most fountain pen inks are not waterproof. So unless it's specified on the ink bottle that it's waterproof, you can assume that the ink is not waterproof. And with fountain pens, when you're using it with waterproof ink, you must look for ink that is made specifically for fountain pens. Because some waterproof inks, they are, when they dry, they can clog up your pen. Especially inks that when they dry, you see those tiny little dust bits around the opening. Those are the dangerous type of inks that you should not use in fountain pens. So let's see what kind of inks we have here. This is the Noodleless ink, golden brown. This is not waterproof. And this is also Noodleless ink. This is Lexington gray. This is supposed to be waterproof. And here I have the Diatramentis archive ink. This is supposed to be waterproof. You can see here that it says that it's made for fountain pens so this ink is safe for fountain pen use you can also get different ink samples in small tubes like this to try out the colors i have to thank lisa Tavu for sending me this lisa is a is a viewer on my youtube channel the price range of fountain pens can range from US $10 all the way up to several thousand dollars. It depends on the design of the body, the brand, the type of nib that's used, the metal that's used for the nib. So gold nibs would be more expensive compared to stainless steel nibs, for example. So if you want to get a fountain pen, you can just start out with a very affordable fountain pen and then perhaps explore other specialty nibs. I started out with a very affordable Lamy Safari pen which is under US $30. I'm still using that pen today, so it's very durable. Fountain pens, generally speaking, are very durable. Alright, that's all for fountain pens. Let's move over to talk about technical pens. There are many brands for technical pens, but I don't think there are as many compared to fountain pen manufacturers. All right, I typically group technical pens into two groups, disposable and non-disposable. So the non-disposable ones are the ones that you can refill. So these are the ones that I have. This is the Rotring Isograph. There are other brands like Call You Know. For this particular technical pen, it actually has an ink converter like this. So you can just squeeze the ink into this converter, put it back and you can then draw with it so in the long run this is quite economical but the pen itself is a bit expensive about us $20 to $30 but you can use it for a long time so it's still worth it you can certainly get you can certainly use fountain pen inks in refillable technical pens like this but the main reason for getting technical pens like this is so that you can use technical pen inks for their qualities which is archival, pigmented, waterproof when dry because they are pigmented there is a tendency for it to clog up the pen if you are not careful if you do not use the pen for a long time if you do not clean it and if the ink dries up you can clog up the pen so pens like this they require more maintenance but the main reason for getting technical pens is so that you can use such inks and also for the consistent line weaves. And of course, you shouldn't use technical pen inks like this in fountain pens. You should always look for inks that are safe for use in fountain pens. Technical pens have needle point tips like this and the different sizes are usually labeled on the body. So this is a 0.7 mm. I have a 0.5 mm as well. They can go all the way down to 0.01 mm. So that's really small. So other than the ink converter, you can also have disposable cartridges like this. I prefer to use ink converter for obvious reason because they 
cut down the cost of buying inks. So these are the refillable ones. The refillable ones, they have metal tips, so they are long lasting. Let me show you the disposable ones. These are made by the same brand, Rotring. These are also needle point tips. They are felt tip, so they are a bit softer on paper. They are not as scratchy compared to metal tips, but they are less durable and they wear out quite fast on rougher paper. The advantage of using technical pens like this is the predictability. The strokes, they are always uniform, always consistent. So this is the uniform width of this particular pen. This is a 0.3. Let me switch over to a 0.5. Now, I have some problems with the ink flow for this particular pen because some parts of the felt tip has worn out. Now, when using technical pens like this to get that consistent width, you often have to use the pen vertically. So this is a bit thicker compared to 0.3. This is 0.5. And to change to a thicker line, you have to change the pen. So this is 0.7. Again, the line is very uniform, very consistent in thickness. So this is the main difference between technical pens and fountain pens and why I prefer to use fountain pens. For technical pens, if you want to change the thickness of the lines, you have to change the pens. It makes drawing a bit slower. Now for fountain pens, as I have shown you earlier, depending on the type of nib you use, you can actually get different line variations with just one single nib. So that to me is quite convenient and I really like that sort of variation. Another thing that I really like about fountain pens is I really like to watch how the ink flows. So even in a line like this, there are little variations in terms of the tone, the value. So you can see the ink running off the tip on the paper. I really like to watch that. It really makes drawing a more enjoyable experience. Technical pens like this, they usually use waterproof ink. They are usually pigmented, they are archival, so they last a long time. And because they are waterproof, you can use them with other medium as well, so for example, watercolor. Now, in addition to needle point tip, there are also brush tips for technical pens like this. So this is a brush tip. So this is not a technical pen anymore. This is considered a brush pen. The color selection for technical pens is usually quite limited. Black is obviously the most common type of ink you can find in technical pens. Some companies, they make additional colors. For example, Copic, there is this brown, and these are also Copic technical pens. This is red, yellow, orange, sky blue. These are all pigment inks, which is quite incredible because it's usually quite rare to find colored technical pens that use pigment inks. This is made by Durant. This is called the Graphic Line Maker. This is graphite in color. They also have sepia color. The price range for technical pens is much lower compared to fountain pens. Here in Singapore, if I were to get a disposable technical pen like this, it's under US $2. For refillable pens like the Rotring Isograph or Rapidograph, they are more expensive. They can cost sometimes 10 times as much compared to the disposable pen. This is the Copic refillable. So they use the cartridge system. So you can replace the cartridge. This is almost as expensive or more expensive compared to the disposable pen. So 
actually personally I think this is not worth the money because as you use the felt tip pen for drawing the felt tip is going to wear off so you have to replace the tip as well and you have to replace the ink so you might as well get a disposable pen like this when the felt tip wears out the ink is almost uh, gone you can just replace the pen but it's less environmentally unfriendly of course there are artists who prefer fountain pens as well as artists who prefer technical pens for me i prefer to draw with fountain pens because i find it to be more enjoyable however i do use pens specifically for the type of lines that they can create so if i'm drawing a sketch a watercolor sketch it's okay to use fountain pens but if i want to add some colored lines then i may actually switch to using those colored technical pens because if I were to refill color into the fountain pen, it's very inconvenient. So that's where the convenience of the technical pen will come in. So that's all for today's video. I hope this is a good and helpful introduction to fountain pens versus technical pens. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to check out reviews for all the pens that I have featured, the links are in the video description below as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.